Welcome to the 30th anniversary celebration of the Living Legends Foundation. I'm your host, Dee Dee McGuire, and we have an exciting show for you tonight. Now, sometimes nostalgic as we walk down memory lane and definitely inspirational as we recap the 30 year journey. To get us started, please welcome the chairman of the Living Legends Foundation, David C. Linton. Thank you, Didi, and thank all of you who have joined us for this virtual event. It goes without saying how much we appreciate your support of the foundation over these 30 years. We have been at the forefront of the calls for equality for blacks in radio and records in terms of positions and compensation. We represent the foundation of the black music culture. Your support has allowed us to have a positive impact on so many lives in so many ways, especially when misfortune hits. Your tax deductible donation allows the foundation to help those with financial needs. We represent the men and women of radio, records, music publishing, publicity, marketing, and more who have built the foundation of the black music industry. Again, thank you for your support and we look forward to continuing our good work with our scholarship program, sending kids to historically black colleges and other universities and financial assistance programs when we recognize the talented men and women working in black music. I hope you will join us in October of 2022 when we will honor Cash Money's Ronald Swim Williams and Brian Birdman Williams with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Sharon Haywood will get the A.D. Washington Chairman's Award. The Jerry Bolden Radio Award will go to Charlemagne the God. The Music Record Executive Award goes to Geo Bivens. The Mike Bernardo Female Executive Award goes to Johnny Walker. And Tuma Basa will get the Digital Executive Award. And we'll round it out with the Trailblazer Award going to the one and only Mr. Hank Caldwell. We hope to see you in Los Angeles for a great time. Now I'm back to you, Dee Dee. The Living Legends Awards dinners have been a reunion of sorts where the music industry comes together to celebrate the accomplishments of their colleagues who are being honored that year. Now, it all started at the Urban Network. Remember the Power Jam Conference? And then it moved over to the Impact Super Summit until becoming a standalone dinner in New York City. And now it's in Los Angeles. It was always highly anticipated and celebrities from music to TV and film would attend as guests of the record labels. At one memorable dinner in 1995, the honorary chairman was the one and only Melvin Van Peoples, God rest his soul, and the hosts were Patti LaBelle and Doug Banks. May he rest in peace as well. And the diva who created the biggest buzz when she walked in it had to be Miss Lena Horn. The magic of the awards dinner was that the artists understood that the honorees were the unsung heroes behind their careers and wanted to show their gratitude. In 2006, there was even a battle to see who could donate the most money. It started out when Kathy Hughes, founder of Radio One and TV One, wrote a big check on the spot. And then Miller London was the president of the foundation at the time, and he grabbed the mic, challenged the record labels not to let a radio network outdo them. Well, that was the year that L.A. Reid was being honored, and he was the chairman of Island Def Jam Music Group, and at the time, he was like, wait a minute, he and Doug Morris, who was the chairman of Universal Music Group, they stepped up to write another big check. And then, not to be outdone, RCA jumped in and wrote a bigger check as well. It was an exciting night, and it raised significant funds for the foundation. Here's a look at some of the award honorees over the years. Over the past 30 years, there have been over 100 influential recipients of our Living Legends Foundation Awards. We can't name them all, but here are a few of the industry professionals who were honored as the top individuals in their craft because they reached back and shared their knowledge with others, mentoring the younger staffers, ensuring that they were equipped when it was their turn to take a leadership position. Some ran their own labels or were the first black executives at their companies, making their mark and paving the way. There were the first black female DJs, 
the first black woman in publishing. The retail store owners who fought for equity and fairness in just being able to provide the music that their customers craved. We saluted innovators who created magazines, newspapers, radio shows, TV shows, and yes, Black Music Month in their desire to preserve the culture. And of course, someone had to document all of this history, and we thank them too. Our business has always been a family affair, so it wasn't unusual for couples, spouses, and children to excel. As the lines blurred between music and technology, the legends became younger, taking the lessons from their mentors and putting their own unique twist on it and even moving into the chairman's suites. The Living Legends Foundation will continue to honor the current torchbearers who are breaking ceilings, taking their seat at the table or making their own table. The mission never stops, so just know we're watching you. You could be the next legend. I could not be with you tonight at the Living Legends Award, but I wanted to share with all my story. I have never had a problem speaking my mind and telling the truth. No sense in starting now, so let me begin with my name. I am Myra, Myra Weston. Weston. I'm the one who's brutally honest, the one that never flinched at a price tag, the one who'll take those boots in every color and will pick and go anywhere in a heartbeat. I've, I've been, been footloose and fancy free all of my life, but smart enough to have a house, a couple of cars, and money in the bank. I'm also the one that grew tired of the music industry after the fall of real music. And lastly, the one that wanted to experience the dream of entrepreneurship. I just didn't dream about entrepreneurship. I jumped in head first. I knew exactly what I was going to do, no fear as I had been taught motion and marketing by the best. Best. However, with all of my industry training, I had no idea I was in an arena with wolves that created red tape. A program director had nothing on these folks that chewed me up and spit me out. After signing a lease, and I was made to wait two years to open my gourmet popcorn business, mainly because I was in the wrong neighborhood with the wrong home. complexion. The red tapers reduced my savings down from $200,000 to $2,000. And, and then, then down to $2. Devastated by this blatant and deliberate act, I found myself in, in real, real trouble. trouble. Never been one to ask for a loan, and it took everything, everything out of me to ask Larry if I could work a record to make some quick cash. Instead, he sent my request to Kelvin, who then sent it to Varnell who then passed it over to David. When I found out my information had been passed around, I thought I was gonna die. All those people knowing my business was more than I could handle. I wanted to scream at Larry for sharing the letter with Kelvin. And scream even louder at Kelvin for sharing this info with Varnell. We eventually shared it with David. I thought only girls had big mouths. Now I'm crying and dying from embarrassment when something hit me like a ton of bricks. I realized that I knew every name on the Living Legends Foundation board. Since beginning my career as a kid in 1977, each person on the board had in some way, shape or form had been like family to me. If they could reach for my hand, I could reach out and accept their gift without being embarrassed. Their act of kindness allowed me to save my house the very month I had no clue how I would make, make payment. payment. The gifts bestowed upon those in need by the Living Legends Foundation Board exemplified the meaning of love, friendship, and kindness. I know oh so well as their gift made a difference. I, for one, am eternally grateful. Thanks a lot for sharing that heartfelt experience, Myra. Listen, in addition to being that discreet and being a helping hand for their colleagues in need, 
the Living Legends Foundation is also extending a hand to the next generation of music makers and executives. They established scholarship programs at three HBCUs, Texas Southern, Clark Atlanta, and Shaw University to support the educational pursuits of students who are planning careers in the entertainment and broadcasting industry. Funds for the scholarship program are raised through the A.D. Washington Scholarship Golf Tournament. It's held annually in Atlanta and it was named for the longest serving chairman of the foundation, A.D. Washington. Recently, we sat down with some aspiring artists and executives to answer some of their burning questions about the music industry. Take a look. Hi, my name is Kendra Hughley. I'm a graduate student here at Kent State University. Hello, my name is India Elise. I'm a singer-songwriter and a contemporary Christian artist. My name is Ren Scrugg. I'm from Ashtabula, Ohio. I'm a hip hop artist. As an independent artist, there's so many different new technologies out there that are changing the game. Um, where are those new technologies at today with music and how does the artist step into that role to really get a part in a piece of those new technologies to really help transition their career? Renz, this might be one of the most important questions in regards to our artist slash musician's career. Uh, in my opinion, there are three major technologies that each artist and musician should be aware of and educating themselves with right now um, that, quite frankly, is disrupting and changing the future of the music business as we know it. Those three technologies are NFTs, non-fungible tokens, um, AI, artificial intelligence, and the gaming industry. All three of these industries are making it super easy and more convenient for the artists to get directly at their fans. Um, cutting out the middleman, no record company involved, no streaming platforms, no uh, social media platforms, no distributor. It's just you getting directly with your fan base. Um, I hope that actually answers your question and good luck in the future. I've always been curious when an artist wins an award, whether it's gold or platinum, who else on their team receives an award? And if so, how is that determined? Hi, I'm Liz Kennedy, and I direct the RAAA's Gold and Platinum Awards Program. The RAA runs the certification program. So labels and artists reach out, they certify with us, we go through all their data. We, once a certification happens and it's made official, it goes live to our website. We have over 17,000 titles on our website that have been certified in the business in the last 65 years. The ordering of plaques is kind of that next separate step. And truthfully, people can order as many as they want or as little as they want. The people authorized to buy the plaques are the labels themselves, you know, and you could be on the marketing team, the senior management team, the press team. But if you're, if you work the record label, you can order plaques. If you're on the artist team, like manager, songwriter, producer, whoever it may be on that side of the artist team, you can order as many as you want to. An artist might say, I've got the budget to order 200 and give them to radio stations that played my song this year. So not anyone can order, but anyone affiliated with the project that's gotten a sign off like the OK from the artist camp or the label camp can then go about ordering as many as they want. And they can gift them to others. They can just order one for themselves. I mean, it really runs the gamut. So since the pandemic, uh, there has been a large amount of talent that has just surfaced. And you know, as a Christian artist, it's already hard, but now you have everyone else that is rising with you. So my question is, you know, as an A&R director or a publisher, someone who's looking for new talent, what could I do to separate myself to make you see me more? Um, or what were you guys looking for as far as you know, artists these days, since there's so much talent out there, what separates me from the rest? Hi, India, how you doing? This is Vicky McLatayad. And so we're looking for things that we don't even know about yet. If it's done, I'm not interested in it. I'm looking for somebody that's just doing something so off and exciting and different. For example, when Jonathan McReynolds came out, he had a guitar. That was very interesting. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm looking for somebody who's ballet dancing on their toes and singing something just very 
different, something that's going to wow me. I'm looking for, personally, I'm looking for somebody who has a look. I love your look. Um, you know, I'm faith-based, but I just went to see Erica Badu three weeks ago. Love her. There's only one of her. She came just dressed in one of these wild outfits, and it just, I love that. I'm going to tell you someone that I'm very, very um, enthused with, and that's Toby Nwigway. He's a person who came up during the pandemic. I mean, if you remember, he had everything was this mint green and white. He's got his wife with him, his baby, his sister. They all got afros. They've got this vibe. And he's like, he's got that try Jesus, don't try me. He is actually faith based, but he's coming in, you know, a little different. Or even PJ Morton. He's, you know, he's the son of a preacher man. He's Bishop Paul S. Morton's son, but he sings love songs and he does gospel music. He got his Grammy doing uh, kind of secular music. We're looking, a lot of us right now are looking for something that's new, that's gonna wow us, that people are gonna be interested, that's going to get, you know, the youth and maybe also some of the more uh, seasoned people. We're looking for numbers. It's still all about numbers, but for me, a person like myself, I'm looking for something that's different. So, uh, you know, and I like things very extreme. It may not seem like it now, but when I signed Kirk Franklin, he was very extreme. Trinity 5-7, they told me I was going to hell for it. Um, on the Christian side, if you're doing that white Christian side, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, you, there aren't a lot of Black females that have really hit all the way. So um, you had Out of Eden that was doing a little something and a few other people, but to really blow up, I haven't seen that yet. So there's a question as to what that looks like. And the bottom line is you need to be not just making up something, you need to be authentically yourself, authentically yourself and, and go with that completely. So that's, that's what I'm looking for, something like that. Hope that answers your question. As you've heard from the grateful recipients of the Living Legends financial grants, the foundation has been a godsend at a time when they needed it the most. The founders recognized that some of the early pioneers were left without pensions and 401ks and some couldn't afford health care. And as the years pass, there were requests for mortgage payments, uh, tax liens, chemo, uh, a whole lot more, you guys. But this isn't the only mission. The foundation aims to recognize and honor legendary music and radio industry figures who have distinguished themselves by their contributions as trailblazers, trendsetters, teachers, and mentors. Funds are raised at the awards dinner and the golf tournament, but the real funding comes from people just like you. Yeah, please help the foundation to keep doing the work of preserving the legacy of black music and their industry figures who sacrificed their own dreams to make sure that their artists are able to attain theirs. Donate now on the website, livinglegendsfoundation.com. Now, let's welcome back Living Legends Foundation Chairman David Linton to present a special award. As Chairman of the Living Legends Foundation, each year I get to select someone to give an award to, and I've always used a few barometers. One, it must be men and women whose impact on the industry should never be forgotten. Two, they've had an impact on my career, a demonstration of them reaching back to help others succeed. And three, their character as human beings, I feel we should all emulate. This year's recipients are no different, except they are a dynamic duo. He worked with some of the biggest artists and molded some of the most successful record executives while at Capitol Records. She was the woman every woman promotion executive wanted to emulate. She was a member of the MCA Records team, now in Universal Music, that literally ruled the 80s when it came to black music culture. They got married in a storybook wedding at Jack the Rapper Convention in Atlanta, Georgia in 1986, and they are celebrating their 35th anniversary this year. 
Many of you already know who I'm talking about. The one and only, the dynamic duel, Keith and Martha Fry. It's a pleasure to be here. And I want to thank everybody for allowing us to be a part of the Living Legends. Uh, this award means so much to me when I was reading about it. And I found out that it was A.D. Washington's Chairman's Award. Uh, A.D. and I worked, oh, wow, for 32 years together. And uh, we started out as co-workers in different markets. And um, we had a very good camaraderie between us because he had the Southwest and I had the Southeast. And between the two of us, we had 60% of the country of radio stations. So we were like always battling to see who could get the most radio ads for the week. And when he became vice president of MCA, he promoted me to national and then to vice president. He was the only one that gave me those opportunities and he taught me so much. And I'm getting teary right now because <laughs> he was a very special person to get this award. It's so very special to me. And I know it is special to keep too because we were, we were great friends in this industry. And I am so honored to be the recipient of this chairman's award named after the man who gave me the breaks that I had in my lifetime in this entertainment industry. Do you want to say something, baby? Well, I think uh, you said a lot. Uh, <laughs> I'll try to squeeze in a couple of words because uh, there are certain people I just want to mention. Uh, when I uh, had a, uh, the opportunity to, to move to Atlanta, I uh, ran into a guy who was at the Radio Ham, and he showed me the ropes and taught me how to be a gentleman. And that man was Scotty Andrews. Uh, hopefully, there's some people left that remembers him. But if it wasn't for a Scotty Andrews, it wouldn't be. Uh, a Keith Fry. Yeah, uh, Keith Fry. <laughs> uh, I can name uh, hundreds of others that he has something to do with their uh, being promoted or, uh, or, or teaching them the ropes and, uh, and how to be a promotion person. So this uh, has been a, um, a wonderful life for me. I um, want to let anyone who does uh, remember those days. And it was great days. Appreciate you giving me this opportunity to be recognized as a living legend. Thank you. One of the hallmarks of the Living Legends Foundation since its beginnings in 1991 has been connecting the past with the present in an effort to ensure the future. Its roots centered around the three pillars of the music industry, radio, the labels, and sales, referred to as retail back in the day. We wouldn't have Charlemagne the God if it weren't for colorful personalities like Frankie Crocker, Tom Joyner and Jack the Rapper Gibson, who signed on America's first black owned and operated radio station, WERD in Atlanta. When black disc jockeys demanded songs for their stations to be serviced by black promotion men, the godfather of black radio promotions, Dave Clark stepped in with the motto, if it has an antenna, I'm taking my record to them. He opened doors for Ray Harris, Doug Daniels, Azim Rashid, Keenan Johnson, 
Black women stood tall in all areas of the business, from music marketing and promotion to label chiefs and radio owners. Before Kathy Hughes, there was Dorothy Brunson, the first black woman to own a radio station, Mildred Carter, and Mutter Evans, who became the youngest black women to own a radio station. Behind the mic, there was the first black woman DJ, Mary D. Dudley, making way for Keisha Monk and Angela Yee. The women also ruled the C-suite in the many record companies from promotions to label president or chairwoman. Women like Mike Bernardo, Sylvia Rohn, and Ethiopia Habtamarium. We can't forget the retailers who are an essential component in breaking artists. The Anderson brothers at VIP Records put Snoop Dogg on the map and the world famous George Daniels in Chicago are just some of the retailers who contributed to the success of the music that we all love. As these physical stores gave way to digital and streaming, executives like Larry Jackson, Curtis Postel, and Whitney Gale Benta have picked up the baton. Today, the foundation continues to honor the culture, whether it's the trailblazers of the past or today's innovators. It is all about honoring and preserving the rich history of black music culture and making sure our history is never whitewashed. The Living Legends Foundation was conceived in 1991 and incorporated in 1992 in Los Angeles, California. Ray Harris, Senior Vice President at Warner Brothers Records at the time, visualized a 501c3 nonprofit organization honoring the behind the scenes people who were trailblazers in radio, records, and retail. At the time, black music artists had many award shows the Soul Train Awards, the Billboard Music Awards, MTV, the American Music Awards, and the RB Foundation Awards. But there was no recognition or assistance for the people off the stage, behind the scenes, who were the backbone of the music industry. Ray Harris approached Jerry Bolding, who ran the Urban Network Conference, and they enlisted CeCe Evans, who worked with Ray at Warner Brothers, and Barbara Lewis, a vice president at Capitol Records. The Living Legends now had its foundation, literally. There were many skeptics in the early days, but persistence and faith in the mission has kept the organization moving forward for 30 years into a new century. 2020 marks the beginning of our new normal. Life as we knew it had changed forever and everyone was adapting and pivoting to keep above water. Adversity can lead to innovation. And that's what happened with the Living Legends Foundation. Since none of us were unable to interact in person, a podcast slash vodcast was born, dubbed Music Day, a verified hit. It's a series of no holds barred conversations with artists, industry insiders, and legendary music icons that is housed on all of the podcast platforms and the video version or the vodcast. It's on the Living Legends Foundation YouTube channel. My background is jazz. For five years, I stood next to Miles Davis. Do you understand? You really understand, Miles Davis. And he instilled in me the understanding, you commit to what you play. And whoever likes it, likes it. If they don't, then they don't. Young people set the pace, really, because they're the ones who have a lot of time. It's what the people that are making the music do outside of the music. That's what matters. Mm -hmm. More more than the music. It's a new day. You know, yeah. you got 40,000 songs hitting DSPs a day. You know, if you got your right team and, and knowledge and reading and, and knowing how to, again, like, I'm not discounting the value of major labels, but you can do it without one. It's the young movement. We ain't going for that old time religion, which y'all had. The young folks, the millennials, is making another move. You won the first artist to win, you know, the Grammy for best female pop and R and B at the same at the same time. I mean, that was unheard of to happen at that time. And so, was that a really was that a really big deal when when that happened? Oh yeah, I mean. I, well, I've, I've been known as the first kid. <laughs> I'm the first to do this. I'm the first to be there. I'm the first when they call when they need me to do something. 
So I'm, I'm the first kid. I don't know who thought that it was a great idea to have your pants down below your butt. <laughs> <laughs> you can't run. If somebody gets after you, you're going you're gonna to fall. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. You know that, John. You know, y'all know that you can't run with your pants down. <laughs> that wasn't a great idea. Let's look at Cardi B for an example, right? Here's the paradigm. Although she raps about these things, she's also very, very vocal about political issues and oppression in black and brown communities and injustice that happens to black men on a daily basis. So do we dismiss? So so my, my question is, do we dismiss that part of her because people are so hyper-focused on the music and what she puts out? Like, like... No, I just, no, 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 not, I don't think you just miss her at all because I love her, to be quite honest. She is a true artist. I love that how she, you know, I love who she is. I, I When I'm speaking, I'm speaking community. It's a catch-22, and it's always been that way. When I wanted to run for office, I regret some of the lyrics I made. I mean, that's why I said when they know better, they'll do better. They'll grow out of it. I don't think that Cardi's going, you know, Cardi can't, they can't do a walk 10 years from now. Nobody's going to even want to look at that walk. <laughs> about restoring awareness first that it is black music because though it's obvious to all of us i think in general in terms of, in terms of the general populace people don't know that and black people in particular i don't think people understand the amount of revenue and opportunity that's going to exist Billionaire artist is going to be, you know, a, a normal thing that we see. It won't be, it won't be one-offs. Peace to the planet. I go by the name of Charlemagne the God. Make sure you tune into Music Day, a verified hit, a podcast powered by the Living Legends Foundation. Inc. It's been a wonderful evening sharing the accomplishments of the Living Legends Foundation. I've had a blast, everybody. I'm gonna tell you something right now. Um, I'm excited to see what the next 30 years brings because I know that the leadership will fight to make sure that the rich legacy of black music will be respected for its cultural and financial impact. Let's support them in this goal. Remember to visit livinglegendsfoundation.com where you can donate, learn about membership and more about this wonderful organization. Happy 30th anniversary, Living Legends, and we will see all of you at the awards gala, October 7th, 2022. Good night.